I've often thought that life was about finding balance. The work-life balance, the rest-exercise balance, the income-expense balance, so forth and so on. Yet when trying to balance things, there needs to be two forces going against each other, trying to find equal space in your life. I don't know about you, but my life is never filled with the same amount of energy or weight in the various areas of my life. And that's actually a good thing. In reading James, I first thought how his theology calls for balance in our spiritual life. Balance between the personal and the communal spiritual aspects. Or in James' words, hearers and doers. That these two forces in our lives needed to be equal. But I think I was wrong. James isn't calling for balance in our chapter and verse today. Because again, that would mean that there needed to be equal weight in these two areas to be able to balance each other. And I'm not sure that's always feasible, given that there will be times when we need to tend to our personal relationship with God and our internal work of spiritual discipleship at greater lengths than the ones of our communal nature, the collective faith of discipleship work. And that vice versa will need to happen as well. I'm beginning to see that James teaches us to work towards harmony in our lives. Harmony is not the removal or addition of aspects of our life so that everything is balanced. Harmony is the arrangement of aspects of our lives so that they work together to make for a peaceful existence. Notice I didn't say a perfect existence, but a peaceful one. James does not tell us that we should outweigh our hearing of the word or doing of the word. But that for either to function peacefully in our lives, they must live in harmony together. One may be more prominent in your life during a certain season. That doesn't mean you have lost the other. They move together in one accord as needed for you to grow in and live from the gospel. It can be human tendency to swing from one extreme to another as we overcompensate for having our personal or communal faith outweigh the other or be more present. And in doing so, we then swing to the other end, being more present and back and forth in hopes to find balance at some point. In trying to find balance, we can create spiritual checklists. I read my Bible today. Check. I donated money to a local food pantry. Check. I prayed before bed. Check. I bought new clothes and gave them to Family Promise. Check. I meditated this morning. Check. And all of you get to do this one. You attended church. Check. You may not have gotten the others, but you at least got that one. In seeking balance, we go back and forth between the internal and external expressions of faith in hopes that they will find balance among themselves. Granted, this isn't a harmful way to go about our faith, but it can be an exhausting one that leaves us feeling as though it's a perpetual comparison between the two or even a competition between hearing and doing with our faith. The book of James is a tapestry of how our faith is to live in harmony. His words are strong and pointed. There's no question what James believes to be truth when it comes to living in and from the gospel. In doing so, James is creating a call and response of sorts. When he says, hearers of the word, he wants the people to follow with and doers of the word. Then shifting the cadence, he calls for works without faith and expects the people to respond is dead. To have a call without a response is incomplete. And to have a response without a call is not listening for the spirit to speak. James is inviting his readers to not create 
the gospel into new law. And he is doing so by reminding them that harmony of faith is needed and that law can only balance the scales. Our Western mindset has taught us to compartmentalize our lives, a skill that can come in quite handy in many aspects of our lives. It can also get to a point that it fragments us so that we lose the sense of wholeness of self. If my faith is only about acknowledging that God stirs within my soul and calls me into an unmatched love story between the creator and I, it's created, I have forgotten that the creator has also designed me to live in community with those who also is called beloved. If my faith is only about caring for the least of these, then I have forgotten that I have been created for a divine love story that speaks to my very soul. When the disciples ask Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? He does not go back to the 10 written in the law or to the prophets, but what undergirds all of them, the harmony of them, if you will. He offers that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourself. These are not void of each other, but they need one another. For we cannot love our neighbor as ourself if we do not love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, or with all our mind. And we cannot fully love God if we do not love our neighbors as ourselves. Our faith is not meant to be divided between these. They are meant to be whole within ourselves. I am told that in music, and yes, I do need to be told, I am not great at music, any of my colleagues can affirm, but I am told that in music, harmony is the pleasant combination of different notes being played at the same time. A four-part harmony doesn't have everyone singing the same tune, but rather taking their different notes to create something remarkable. If that's wrong, take it up with them. <laughs> However, if it's right, Anne and Anne both say I'm right, how much better can you get? Our faith is not meant to have everything filtered through the hearing or the doing of the word exclusively, but that our faith allows both of them to join together to make something remarkable within and outside of ourselves. James expands upon the aspects of harmony in our faith throughout our lesson today. Quick to listen, slow to speak slow to anger, have meekness, care for the widow and the orphan, and do not be stained by the world. Be quick to listen. I love that in my mind, these are juxtaposed to one another. Our tendency is be quick to speak, but James tells us that we should be quick to listen. When given the chance to listen to somebody's story, be quick to be present to do so. Allow yourself to hear them. We can listen without hearing. Yet if we open ourselves to hearing them, we open ourselves to hearing what they are actually saying so that we can learn and see their belovedness at the same time. Be slow to speak. When it's time for you to speak, take your time. By this, I don't mean to speak slowly in cadence, but to sit in that conversation. Allow yourself to include more than your initial reaction. If we couple this with being quick to listen, we can see that we shouldn't wait for the chance to someone to finish speaking just so that we can speak. Rather, we sit in that moment, knowing that not every moment needs to be filled with speaking. Give space for thoughtful conversation to be had. Be slow to anger. Again, we are not told that we are not allowed to be angry, but be slow to anger. 
few weeks ago, we talked about how we are not to dismiss our anger, but to not sin from it. Be angry when evil takes place, when injustice seems to prevail, and when foolishness consumes a situation. Be slow to allow that anger to be your motivation. Learn that what angers you so that when you face it, you can control it. And be slow to function from hot anger and move yourself to cool anger. With hot anger, we act irrationally and misdirect it towards the wrong people or systems. With slow or cold anger, we focus on how to change oppression, exploitation, and injustice. Be slow to anger allows us to grow from cold anger rather than being consumed by wickedness. Be meek, a term that is often attributed to someone who is deficient in spirit or courage. Yet that is not the context of how James uses this word. James is referring to be able to endure injustice or injury with patience and without resentment or acting violently, but to be strong. To be meek is to allow the teachings of Jesus with a disposition that allows it to be ingrained in our very spirit so that we can see the complexity of life with strength in our faith and a level of patience that allows us to forgive. Care for the widow and the orphan who are in distress. There is no other requirement to this statement than to care for them. The least of these is who we are called to care for. That to be unstained by the world means that we care for each other well. That to be pure in our faith means we cannot stay in our stained glass sanctuaries and not carry our faith out into the world and our lives Monday through Saturday. James does not want us to choose one aspect of our faith journey over the other or to say one is more important. James wants us to find harmony in being hearers and doers of the word. To only put focus on the internal or personal faith, we miss out on how we are needed in our families, communities, and throughout the world. If we only focus on the needs of our families, communities, and the world, we will become burned out or even disillusioned with the distresses of life. James speaks to the need for us to allow the distresses of the world to be addressed in our Sunday morning worship and that we need to pray, study, and be with God throughout the week in all areas outside of these walls. Balance teaches that we are either to have excess or lacking in an area of our faith practices. And until we find balance, they are not equal. Again, that is not a bad way to explore faith. It's just not what James is inviting us to do. James is teaching us that our faith is not a back and forth of excess or lacking, but a harmony so that at any given moment, in any given area of our lives, we get to integrate them, all areas of our faith, to create something pleasant for us and something pleasing to God. James reminds us that integration of our faith is what Jesus modeled for us and what God invites us to do. Our faith is never an either or situation. It is always a both and. For we worship a God who has been creating harmony from very different creations since the beginning of time. In your unique way, integrate your faith as you are both hearers and doers of the gospel. In a time such as this, we are to be composers of harmony as we live integrated and intersexual lives. 
move from this sacred space into the sacredness of the world so that the love of God can be known from our hearts, souls, and minds, and so that we can actually love our neighbors as ourselves. God never gives you a choice between internal and external faith. God simply says you have both. Now go and live well. So Calvary, go from this space and live well. Amen.